we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be alleviated with all the, all these menial tasks but that also means you know there's going to be strife and chaos but it's the opportunity of us actually being able to use our creativity without any balance that's where the i think the main task of the first story is how do we make a sustainable um, ecology slash um, economy where people get a, a basic income so you have the basic needs met but also to the supplemental part of that is then to how do you keep on providing these people with with empowerment of them dreaming up the new model of where where we could go as a species of how we could create equilibrium back into to the environment of how we we could solve these social problems of how how we could get past this 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 narrative of us versus you and and all we do basically what politics is is right now and and this is what robert anton wilson said one time is the basic primate uh, instinct of flinging shit at each other. So basically, that's what happened in this this election, right? Donald Trump, his insults was him, his primate instinct of literally throwing shit at somebody. And Hillary will be like, "Oh yeah, well you're you're a racist and a bigot. Well you should go to jail." And this is just them playing on the basis level of a primate but throwing shit. The real creativity or the real task would be, okay, we things suck. How do we? build a better model how do we and but also too at the same time how do we like work doesn't just have to be not fun it could be also exciting we could we could say something deep and, and still have fun and party that's why i had in, in there you know uh every day that you don't dance should be considered a, a lost day like you know that that if we get so caught up and thinking that everything's so dire or the problems seem too much and we forget to stop and smell the roses to stop and, and laugh and joke or listen to music and and you know sometimes you, we think we feel bad um and this is something Douglas Rush Trump was talking about you know we think oh if we don't go and save the rainforest or or the water or or, or what's happening in the Middle East or in Africa people are dying and this and that and we get burned out because we forget the you know one of the, the core things about about being alive is just stopping and being as we get moved forward and we stop being so resistant to to certain things that there's this sublime melancholy thing that happens there there's even i i used to write a lot in my poetry about it it was so beautiful that it hurt and in the opposite to sometimes something that's kind of hard and, and painful is beautiful like for instance um i, I learned this at a very young age because I, I was lucky enough to have this experience of my gra great grandmother she she lived to be 94 or whatever, and she used to live with us part-time. She would like go from here to Oregon. And so I was really close to her, and I remembered the process of her death. And you know, this is something that's supposed to be really sad, and I'm gonna lose my grandma. I think I was about like 10, and we went to the hospital. And every time we went to the hospital, she would make us laugh. She like literally got us kicked out of the hospital because she was making us laugh and said, oh, and then when the doctor would come in, she would fake like, oh, I'm tired, I need to sleep. And they're like, you need to let your grandma rest and this and that. And then they finally literally kicked us out of the hospital. And then as we were getting kicked out, she was like sticking her tongue at us. So, and she was dying and she was always worried about like us, you know, enjoying that moment. Don't be so, so distraught about, oh, we're losing you without missing the moment of savoring every last moment that she's there alive. And I remember she, when they kind of like said, oh, there's nothing else we could do. She's like, I don't want to stay here and die in a hospital. And then she went to my aunt's house and we were there and 
there was this moment where she kind of like said, oh, I'm going to rest. And she went and I think I left something on the table and I went there and she she died. And, and there was this moment because how she like prepared us that even though that moment was intensely sad, but I had this, this overwhelming sense of beauty that, you know, she enjoyed and made sure that we enjoyed every last moment with her, every milked life for all it's worth. And that to finally when she left, even though I'm gonna miss her, I, those feelings and emotions and memories that I have of her still resonate with me right now. And that is beauty. That's the beauty I want to constantly latch on to. And of course, distractions from society, work, drama with, with friends and family all take me away from that. But that's constantly something I hold deep within me. And that those are the type of things that are real and make everything real. And those are, are like probably the hardest things to hold on to as we get our attention distracted by everything. That to simply be able to laugh and be with each other. And I think we, we could go so far out with, with this technology that we hopefully come back to ourselves. And that, you know, we find social networking does make us more antisocial, but if we could curve that to making us have these moments of, of communing with each other and expressing ourselves fully and, and doing that in a creative way that sparks rip, ripples of creativity to other people. And if we could just do that with a, a small fraction of the people, I think that, that would be a success for Infinite Imaginary.